it, it goes way back, obviously, to the, the 30th of November, 1976. Um, my dad was called on to duty, left as he would normally do, the kiss goodnight, the flash of the blue light as he left and turned right at the end of the street. And within what you would say is half a mile, they came across a car stopped and someone lying in the road. That car moved on, my dad got out and approached what he thought was a, an injured prison officer because that's how the person was dressed um, and essentially was attacked. During the attack, a local bus approached um, and slowed down, believing it was a roadblock because of the police van. Um, my dad broke free from that to try and wave the bus on. Unfortunately, fell into the bus, and when he did fall in there, that was basically his, when was his last breath. Um, ultimately, that was his final act of heroism. It was escaping from what was almost certain death to try and save some people on a bus. The impact was almost instant. As a family, it was very difficult to transition because it was a very known scenario that happened and you had this thing as a, a kind of eight-year-old and I was the oldest of four. At school, you felt you were kind of being judged in a way. Children are resilient, but it still hangs in your head. There were still visits by who had been friends, police officers who were friends of my dad. We were still part of the greater police family, but as we grew, we tried to do our own investigations into finding out the real reasons and the real story behind what really happened. So we, we had a journey, which meant we continued to grieve. As Nina approached leaving school, she didn't want to go to university. Because of my background as a serving police officer, and indeed her brother's uh, background as a serving police officer, she felt that uh, she would like to join the police service. She subsequently joined the job at 19. She loved it. And then on the 25th of October, 1997, with colleagues, she went to a house in Stratford in East London uh, to arrest a man who was wanted by the police and as they entered the premises, uh, the suspect uh, stabbed her a fatal wound in the chest, uh, and she subsequently died from that. This event occurred some nearly 26 years ago, and it is as emotional as you will appreciate. We haven't got a huge family, and my son, who is subsequently married, and we have two grandchildren, but we were looking forward to seeing my daughter married and having children of her own. And in a sense, uh, we've been dreadfully aware that we've, we've lost her. I think we think about her every day. It's a strange thing to say, but from the moment that part of your family or a member of your family joins the police no matter where it is, you become part of that. Just now my, my brother's a police officer, so it, that legacy continues throughout and we visit you know, this place at Tully Allen to the memorial to recognise that, you know, to, to feel like he's still there because this is the place where his career all started. It's always been important to me that these police deaths, such as Nina's, are not forgotten. The relatives do not need reminding and the next of kin and serving officers, that new fallen officers, do not need reminding of the death. But the public do need reminding that uh, in the line of duty, many officers over generations have lost their lives 